The Kansas City Chiefs are looking to keep a six-year-long winning streak going against the Denver Broncos, and the Denver Broncos are looking for just anything positive to happen here in the 2022 season. Welcome to this week's crossover edition, Locked On Broncos and Locked On Chiefs. I'm Sayer Bettinger, co-host of the Locked On Broncos podcast, here with Chris Clark, co-host of the Locked On Chiefs podcast. Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in here on the Locked On Podcast Network, making Locked On Broncos or Locked On Chiefs your first listen of the day, free and available on any platform you listen to, as well as on YouTube, so you can watch or listen wherever you're at. And Crossover Thursday is presented by our friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is so much fun. It's easy to play. There's no competing with other players. It's just you versus the projections available. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. It, it can literally take less than 60 seconds to enter. It's that easy. And we love prize picks. We know you will too. And first time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. That's one word. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. And Chris, we're shaping up to see a, you know, a, I, dare I say, interesting matchup between the Denver Broncos and Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, interesting from whatever, I, I guess, depending on what perspective you look at it from. But it, it's certainly one of those things where the Chiefs, once again, in a position to clinch in terms of playoffs. The Broncos pretty much clinched not making the playoffs. So this game got flexed out of primetime. Not even Patrick Mahomes could keep the Denver Broncos and Russell Wilson in primetime. I'm interested to hear from you. I know we're going to take a look at a, a number of different angles from this game, but what would you say looking at this game between the Kansas City Chiefs, the Denver Broncos here in early December, the first of two matchups between these teams? What are you looking at in terms of, of you know, just the, the biggest storyline from the Kansas City Chiefs perspective? I think the biggest storyline has to be their chase of a seventh consecutive division title uh, and really the number one seed in the AFC. And that is what the storyline is going into this week for me. And I say that because you watch them lose to the Bengals for the third time in a calendar year. That is the craziest thing to me. It's the third time this in 2022. And how are they going to respond? And, you know, we'll get into our predictions later. And, and I'm trying, I'll, I'll be very clear on this. Um, I do think that this is a game that, you know, Kansas City should not be looking over because the Broncos have talent on defense. But we've seen what they've done with Russell Wilson. And this is a game that Kansas City should feel pretty good about. But they have to play their game and they have to show up and they have to be ready for it. And there can't be a hangover from last week's loss. Right. And, and that's the biggest thing. It's like uh, from the Broncos fans perspective, I, I can only speak for myself, but I'm sure a number of others kind of, you know, share the same perspective. Like you don't want to play the Kansas City Chiefs coming off of a loss, right? At least in the Andy Reid era or the Patrick Mahomes era, it's been really tough to beat them coming off a loss. I guess if you're the Cincinnati Bengals, you've got the, the kryptonite or whatever. But man, it, it for the Denver Broncos coming into this game, it's kind of like, dang, you wish they had won a, a close fought battle the week before against Cincinnati so that you could maybe be the one to trip them up here because I don't necessarily see the Broncos as a trap game type of team, Chris. I, I really don't. I think the Broncos attitude and mentality, it just, you kind of get the vibe. Nathaniel Hackett and Russell Wilson, they spoke to the media on Wednesday and they were asked specifically like about this Chiefs rivalry and about the losing streak and all these different things. And they're like, you know what? The past is the past. This is the now. And I'm kind of just sitting there with with part of my, you know, my face in my hand, just wondering, like, man, like, get fired up about this game. Right. So to me, the biggest storyline is not that the Broncos can, you know, just go out there and whoop the Chiefs. But like you said, if the defense is able to put you in position to win, can the offense come out there and actually do its job? Because all season long, they haven't, which gives me zero faith about the game. I know, like you said, we'll get into predictions for later, but the offense simply hasn't been able to show up this season at all I, I mean it's been one game after another Cody and I were talking about it early in the week and especially right after the Ravens game when it was a fresh loss on our minds there really to me you look at this Broncos offense as something that's not just a, it's not a work in progress it's something that you're going to have to completely dismantle 
at the end of the season. So really the storyline right now is as these guys are playing for jobs and auditioning for the future, you know, the, the, the offense has to show up. The defense has done its part all year. They've been fantastic. The offense, they haven't necessarily been turning the ball over like we've become used to and accustomed to seeing the Broncos do in recent years, but they just not scoring points. They didn't even have a single red zone trip against the Baltimore Ravens, Chris. So it's desperate times in Denver. How are you feeling in terms of storylines about the Kansas City Chiefs defensively in this game going up against Russell Wilson and the Broncos? I will tell you this. I really missed on the Russell Wilson to the Broncos thing uh, earlier this year. I picked the Broncos to be in contention for at least the second position in the division because I thought Russell Wilson was going to step in. And you look at the offensive, offensive weapons that they have. I mean, they have weapons in Denver. They have Corlin Sutton is a fantastic wide receiver. KJ Hamler is a good wide receiver. Jerry Judy is a good wide receiver. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say that they are on the level of what the Bengals have at wide receiver because I think that they're probably on one of their own levels with their top three at least. But they have good weapons there, and you have a running game. You know, you look at how this season started, and you have a, a guy that's stepping in that's, you know, tears his ACL, and it really ruins part of what you have on offense. So. I think that I was really surprised that Wilson hasn't been able to be successful in Denver. Um, but I don't think that that's going to change in this game because the reality, at least in my perspective of what I've seen is he's just not, he's not as good as we thought he was. He's not, he's not the player he was in Seattle for years. He has lost a step and he looks like he is, uh, his decision-making isn't quite there either. It, right. And it's all encompassing. And like you mentioned, there are good receivers or talented receivers on the roster. But unfortunately, no Cortland Sutton for this week, at least very unlikely, according to Nathaniel Hackett, KJ Hamler on injured reserve. So the Broncos practice right. squad boys, the, the those guys are going to be up again for this Kansas City game. And we'll kind of see what they're able to do. And we're going to talk about some of the key matchups in this game, whether individual players or or unit against unit for Broncos Chiefs. But today's episode, I got to tell you this, it's ep it's brought to you by Audible. And Audible is releasing a slate of new football podcasts that we're, sh we're sure you're going to love. And that's why you're able to find a sneak peek of Block Forever available on Locked On NFL right now. And Block Forever is a brand new podcast from former NFL All-Pro Ryan Khalil and Audible. And Khalil takes the conversation about football to the next level, right? He gives football fans an insider's look at the game through the eyes of the greatest players and personalities of all time. Khalil sits down with star players, coaches, former pros across the league to get real about what happens on the field and behind the scenes, inside locker rooms, during team meetings, and back at the hotel. So head over to Locked On NFL for a sneak peek at Block Forever, or you can catch the full series available anywhere you get your podcasts available everywhere now audible get in the game thanks again everybody also for making locked on broncos and locked on chiefs your first listen today and for your second listen don't forget check out locked on sports today from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Chris, we're looking at this matchup from a, a just an individual. The matchups within the matchups, Denver Broncos versus Kansas City Chiefs. This one's going to be in Denver a couple weeks from now. They'll be in Kansas City. As things kind of stand right now, what is a matchup? When Kansas City's playing offensively, the Broncos are on defense. What's a matchup you are looking forward to seeing in this game what do they do with travis kelsey and i say that and i can almost say that every single week just because he's that type of player but the reality is is that's really going to determine what the broncos are able to get done on defense uh yeah he had a huge fumble last week he is beating himself up about it he talked about it on his own podcast uh new heights and so i think that what are they gonna do with travis kelsey because i think i guarantee you he's gonna come into this game pissed off and you, you take it a step further and it's not just Travis Kelsey, though, but it's also when you start trying to figure out what you're going to do with Travis Kelsey, you start looking at the Chiefs' other weapons. How are they going to slow down Juju Smith-Schuster? I'm not saying he's been insanely productive, but he's been productive enough, and he will move the chains. 
and keep the offense going. And that those are a couple of the matchups on offense that I'm really looking forward to watching. I am too. You know, it's always a fun thing to be able to see, hey, how are the Broncos going to try and slow down Travis Kelsey? Because I think even if you took away every other game besides the games he played against Denver in his career, he'd probably still be headed towards the Hall of Fame, right? I mean, maybe even more so. He's been so dominant against the Broncos. He's the reason why everybody in the Broncos fan base is like, we got to find a, a linebacker or somebody out there that can cover tight ends. And really, I mean, as time has gone along, we understand you can't just find somebody. You can't just go out there and free agency or the draft and find somebody that can cover Travis Kelsey. Justin Simmons actually talked about that when he was meeting the media on Wednesday. He talked about the fact that, I mean, against man coverage, Travis Kelsey just knows how to beat man. He, he just he's simply just one of the best ever at doing it. And against zone coverage, I, I mean, especially when the, the play breaks down, Travis Kelsey, he's able to find those soft spots. He's able to find those holes in the zone coverage and just sit down and Patrick Mahomes knows how to find him. So well, that is going to be a fun matchup for sure. Really quick, I think the thing that Kelsey never gets credit enough for is I think he reads the defense just about as good as a as a quarterback. And mm -hmm. I think that's so huge. When you start talking about zones and him knowing where the soft spots are and being able to sit down in those soft spots or being able to get open after – the play breaks down. Yeah, he does. I mean, he and and he and Patrick Mahomes are always on the same page, which makes them so yep. difficult to defend. It takes you four. I mean, as the Bengals have found out, sometimes it takes you five periods to even beat these guys because they're so effective and so efficient. And I think when the Broncos are on defense and, or, you know, and then the Chiefs are on offense, I'm kind of looking at the same type of matchup, but I'm looking more towards the line of scrimmage. Can those Broncos pass rushers get after Patrick Mahomes? We've seen throughout the season. The Broncos have been pretty good in terms of applying pressure. There was a little bit of a dry spell after the Bradley Chubb trade, but things have started to heat up again lately with Baron Browning and, and Jacob Martin, the player that they acquired at the trade deadline. Obviously, Draymond Jones and Deshaun Williams and DJ Jones on that interior defensive line. We've been seeing a lot of Alex Singleton and Josie Jewell getting sent on blitzes. Uh, even the nickel corner this past week against Baltimore got sent. The Broncos were getting good pressure, and they have been getting good pressure, I would say, for the majority of the season. But as we've seen against Patrick Mahomes, you can have the perfect pass rush dialed up, and you can get your hands on him. And if he escapes and gets out, well, who's he going to go out there and find on the scramble drill, right? He's always going to find Travis Kelsey. So if if you don't get there with your first guy, the second guy can't miss, right? And, and so that's where I think we're looking at this matchup defensively for the Denver Broncos. If your first guy gets there and misses, does the second guy come in and, and make the play? So that's what I'm looking for when the Broncos are on offense, though. The matchup that we've all been waiting to see kind of come to, to a point of maybe just something good happening, right, is that passing attack of Denver against the pass defense of the Kansas City Chiefs. And that that's all-encompassing. That's from pass protection to the time the ball leaves Russ's hands to the guys running the routes because we haven't seen anything really good happen in that regard consistently all year. I will say this, Chris, the one the one thing that's been a, a huge positive over the last, you know, month and a half, two months it has been the development of Greg Dulcich and, and his usage as a weapon in the in the passing game. He's been a dynamic playmaker. He's shown strong hands. He's shown ability after the catch. He can get vertical down the field. Greg Dulcich is going to be a guy that I think the Broncos will utilize him all around the formation, especially with no, like I said, Cortland Sutton. KJ Hamler, those guys are out for this game. And Jerry Judy is also, he's, he's limited to start the week with his ankle injury. He's probably going to play though, but we're going to see a healthy dosage once again of Greg Dulcich. Can he and the passing attack find those holes against Kansas City and take advantage? You know, and, and these receivers that the Broncos actually have playing. Kendall Hinton, Montrell Washington, Jalen Virgil, Brandon Johnson, you know, a lot of guys that Chiefs fans may be hearing their names for the very first time. Th those guys have to find ways to to make plays and make their presence felt and get open and do something with the opportunities that they're given. So when the Broncos are on offense, I'm looking forward to seeing that passing attack go up against the Chiefs defense. How about you? When the Chiefs are on defense, what's the matchup you're looking at? I want to th throw something out really quick about Patrick Mahomes versus your defensive line. I think that's going to be a fantastic matchup. And you're absolutely mm -hmm. right. If you don't hit him with the first guy and you get him down, he's going to get out. He's going to do something. But the other key there is you can't really blitz him. If you blitz Patrick Mahomes, it's generally not going to wind up very well for you. So that's something else to watch. 
Uh, when you start looking at the Chiefs defense versus this Broncos offense, I think you're right. I think that, you know, the entire passing attack is is a big question when you start looking at the Broncos going against the Chiefs. And I have a big question there because while I think the corners played pretty well last week to an extent, considering that you have three rookies that are basically taking a lot of your snaps at corner, uh, the safeties really left something on the field and, and the linebackers did as well. It's a question of can Kansas City show that they can be defensively sound in their scheme and do what they're supposed to do. Uh, I was really surprised by the effort that we saw by some of the safeties and the and the linebackers at times last week because that game should have meant everything to Kansas City after what happened uh, in the playoffs last year, and it just didn't look like they were quite to the level that I expected that they were going to be at. Right, and we saw even on social media a little bit throughout the week early on, mm -hmm. Justin Reed kind of getting called out a little bit for some missed opportunities there against the Bengals. And certainly, I mean, the Broncos have kind of been a, if I can say, get right team for a lot of other teams this season, especially, I mean, you look at the the Las Vegas Raiders, the, the couple of times that we've seen them play really well in stretches this season has come after they played the Denver Broncos. So I guess we'll kind of see what happens in this game. Another quick one to look for, Chris Jones against that interior Broncos offensive line. Is he going to be out there just wrecking the game? I mean, we know that he does that on a regular basis, right? But if he's out there and, and he's getting interior pressure, that's going to make it very, very difficult for Russell Wilson to find anybody downfield, much less see the field in, in its entirety. So it's going to be it's going to be an interesting game, right? I mean, we look at these different key matchups going forward, and man, it just feels like things are just weighing so heavily in favor of Kansas City, but you know what? It's any given Sunday, and we're going to be giving our predictions here coming up, but first, I want to tell you about a couple of sponsors today, Bet Online and Built Bar. And BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer and esports. We've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline. As well, we're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts and our friends over there at Built Bar. So can we pause for a second and just say the Built Bars, they're they're amazing. I mean, Built Bar's got new reimagined flavors. The, coca, the cookie dough topper, the coconut brownie bar, coconut brownie topper, white chocolate peppermint granola, Built's take on the granola bar, so it's more filling, and I mean, it's still insanely tasty. And then you have candy cane brownie puff. I mean, Chris, I don't know about you, but the puffs, I put those things in the microwave for like eight seconds. It's perfect. It's like biting into the oh, universe's man. most delicious cloud. So first off, for anybody that hasn't tried Built Bars before, I mean, they're, they're the best tasting protein bars ever, and they're revolutionizing nutrition as we know it with 100% real chocolate, 17 grams of protein, shockingly low sugar and calories, only 130 calories. So I, I know that helps if you're checking out your macros and things like that. Built Bars can help you out, just curb that little uh, sweet tooth that you've got. So sink your teeth into that first bite and it'll change your life. I mean, it, it'll, it'll change the way you approach nutrition and fitness, and there will be a time before you will think about this there's I, I can't make my life before built bars in these new flavors so uh and the magical wonderful time afterwards so i i have a lot of different flavors that are my favorites chris i personally love just any of the brownie like the brownie ones those are always good especially heated up in the microwave so you gotta try uh, maybe one of those mixed boxes you can try those and find your favorite flavor but get 15 percent off your order right now by using the code locked on 15 all one word at built Dot com. All right, Chris, we're into it here. Predictions for the Denver Broncos and the Kansas City Chiefs here late in the season. I mean, it's one of those things where we kind of know what these teams are at this point well enough to be able to kind of say, with, you know, with a reasonable expectation, what we think is going to happen. So I'm going to throw it to you first. What is your prediction for this game? You know, I look at this game and while the records uh, are certainly very different, uh, and I think that the talent level, obviously, based on the records, is probably very different between these two teams. It's a divisional game. And the other thing that you look at is you look at the Raiders, or, sorry, not the Raiders, you look at the Broncos, 
this year. And I said the Raiders because I was just looking at the scores a second ago. The Raiders are the only team I think that have gone over 30 points against the Broncos this season. The Broncos defense has been playing very well. It's just that their offense can't score any points. And I bring that up because while Kansas City's offense is the number one offense in the league in scoring, they're scoring over 29 points a game. Uh, I think that's fantastic. I would love to think that they could score over 30 points against the Broncos, but the way the defense is playing and the way that they've been able to, I'm not going to say shut down teams, but slow them down enough to where they could make it even with their offense or closer to even with their offense. I think that that's problematic. Uh, and, and one of the biggest things you talked about earlier was pass rush. Is the Denver Broncos pass rush going to get home against the Chiefs? If it does, that makes this game harder for Kansas City to win. I still think they win the game. Uh, I still think that they are able to put up some points. I just don't know that they're going to be getting over 30 like you would normally expect for Chiefs offense, especially in a divisional game. So I'm going Kansas City 27, Denver 14. I, I could see that. You know, that would mean two touchdowns, though, for the Broncos. So, I mean, you're giving them uh, you're giving them a lot of credit there, Chris. I, I think really for me it boils down to can the Broncos defense – hold the Kansas City Chiefs for a long enough amount of time for their offense to be able to put some sustained drives together. And we've seen that all throughout the year. Like you mentioned, that one game against the Raiders was really the one time the Broncos defense kind of fell apart for the most part, right? And, and I think going forward here, looking at this matchup against the Kansas City Chiefs, are you going to be able to have some success against Patrick Mahomes? Are you going to be able to have some success against that offense and really not give up on the season? I think the Broncos defense is going to come out in this game and play extremely hard. I think we're going to see them hold the Kansas City Chiefs to just barely over 20 points. The question is, can the Denver offense actually score if they hold the Chiefs to 23 points? Can the Broncos offense score 24 uh, up to this point this season, we, we've barely seen that at all. So I'm not confident in it, Chris. I, I like to I like to do kind of on these predictions here. I like to give kind of what my head is, is saying and then what I'm trying to manifest from my heart. So what my head is saying here is that the Kansas City Chiefs are going to win this game 24 to 17. That seems to be right around where the Broncos have been this season in terms of scoring like 14 to 17 points. But my heart is trying to manifest that 24 to 23 Broncos win with a field goal as time expires, right? So they're playing at home. They're playing for jobs. I'm just not confident that that's going to happen, but we're trying to manifest it from the heart, right? So we got to keep it a, at least a little bit positive on the Broncos side. I don't see them winning this game. I'm not going into this week expecting it, but I mean, you, you never know. I mean, it's any given Sunday, right? And they got flexed out of prime time. So they're playing at home. You never know what can happen. It would be the first time the Broncos have beat Mahomes. It would be the first time they beat the Kansas City Chiefs since 2015 when they won the Super Bowl. It would be something else. And it would certainly send Broncos country into a tizzy from the fact and the standpoint of like right now, everybody's kind of moved on for like after the season. Everybody thinks, OK, well, Nathaniel Hackett, he's out. What's going to happen with Russell Wilson? Everybody's kind of already moved on to that point. But if then you go out and beat the Kansas City Chiefs, I wonder how much would that change the discussion, if anything. So that's where that's where my head and my heart is at, Chris. Uh, do you have any final thoughts on this matchup? You know, you made a great point, and I didn't think about it uh, when I said 14. I think I'm going to change my score, and I'll go 27-13, because oh. I, I do think that Kansas City is probably going to be a little bit better in the red zone. Uh, and and they the Broncos have had trouble scoring there. So I think that they maybe get close enough for a field goal, especially considering it's in Denver and they're going to be able to kick from further. So I think that could play into it. Um, the other thing I will say is that you're right. It's any given Sunday. But the one thing I will say about this is the Chiefs are in a position where they have to be extremely pissed off about how that last game ended. And if Kansas City is pissed off, this might be a very interesting game and it may be getting out of hand a lot quicker than I would than I would normally think. Right. And we've seen that before around this time of year in, in Broncos Chiefs matchups. So I guess as of right now, we're kind of just hoping for the best from Broncos country's perspective in terms of a good game. Hopefully they can give the Kansas City Chiefs maybe the best game that we've seen the Broncos give the Chiefs in six or seven years from the Chiefs perspective looking to bounce back. Thank you again to everybody making Locked On Broncos, Locked On Chiefs, your first listen of the day every day. We'll look forward to seeing you later on this week.